Our next speaker is a robot framework activist on a mission to change RPA industry. Founder and CEO of Robocorp, member of a uh, member of board at Robot Framework Foundation. Please welcome onto the stage Antti Karjalainen. Great. Really wonderful to be here. I, I was actually speaking last time as well and, and enjoyed it quite much. And, um, and uh, I want to incorporate a bit of our uh, official conference team in the, my presentation, which is the global takeover in 2020. And <clears throat> my topic is on the open API ecosystem. So briefly intro, I think Antti handled that part, but uh, I'm a CEO and co-founder of, of Robocop and uh, currently also on the board of Robo Framework Foundation. And, and I can say that I probably I'm a Robo Framework enthusiast as well, I've kind of been around the scene for a while. So I did this last time I was, I was here a year ago. I asked everyone that who knows what RPA is, hands up now. Who's been using RPA for something? Quite a surprisingly large amount of people. Last year, everyone knew what it, as everyone has had heard about it, but nobody pretty much knew what it is. And, and now this year, it seems that everyone knows what RPA is. But we, we had a, a few testing talks in the, in the morning, so, so it's good to go through a bit what, how RPA is different from testing, just like on a super, su superficial level. Uh, in, on, on the technical side, RPA seems like uh, test automation. It's all about automating applications with software robots, right? So clicking uh, interfaces using APIs. But, but there's a few key differences in RPA. Mostly it's, it's a, a bit different paradigm in, in thinking. RPA focuses on transactions, whereas testing focuses on validation. And, um, and usually RPA is, is, a, is a bit more business critical than testing. Testing is done during the development cycle and, and RPA is during production. And, and RPA has a lot of a lot of more business logic and error handling too. And, and, and the monitoring and reporting is quite different in RPA. In RPA you might be reporting how many invoices has the robot processed, while as in testing you might be interested in how many test cases failed and how many passed. So, so that's on the, on the, really on the, on the top level, what, what are the differences with RPA and testing. So last year we introduced Robot Framework really as, as an RPA tool the first time. We kind of officially uh, came together and said, yes, this tool can be used for RPA. And after that, what has happened uh, with, with Robot Framework RPA has been that it's a lot of large enterprises that have been drawn to it. I think we're going to be hearing a lot of, a uh, few, few talks today as well about how Robot Framework has been used in RPA already. And, and the funny thing with Robo Framework and RPA is that whenever you go to a large enterprise, a large corporation, they might be using some other proprietary, proprietary tool for RPA already, but when you introduce the kind of the, uh, concept of, of using Robo Framework for RPA, it's almost 100% that everyone says that yes, we want to have that. That's something that we want to start doing. It's not something that they're like, yeah, well, let's think about it, but it's like 100% that we need to have that. It might be that they want to have it in addition to their proprietary solutions or they want to use that as their main tool. But, but there's something really compelling with the promise of, of open source RPA for large enterprises. And, and what has also been happening is that a lot of new people are, are coming to RPA because of open source, because of the availability of open source solutions in RPA. It, there has been kind of an influx of, of people who have kind of come to the RPA industry because of that kind of enabling new things. And, and what I think has been the most interesting thing to notice is that, that we have started to see a lot of uh, new use cases for RPA because we have the open source tools available to do that. There has been 
companies uh, that have been reaching out to me and saying we want to serve small and medium enterprises in in the UK or in Germany or in South Africa or South America somewhere. A lot of companies starting to form around the concept of serving small and medium enterprises. That that's something that hasn't happened before with RPA. And also we have, we have started to see companies form that are serving specific verticals with RPA, let's say like healthcare providers or, or similar vertical specific solutions where they target uh, maybe on a broader geographic area, but still a, a special use case inside RPA. And, and this goes to show that, that the RPA market is in fact is, is a lot bigger than we have been think, uh, thinking about before. So it's not just the Fortune 1000 companies around there that can afford to do RPA or can invest in that. It's, the market is actually, in fact, a lot bigger. And then a lot of new people are starting to know this robot framework. When we have introduced this use case, even though it's a, it's a small mention on the, on the main page, people have started to talk about it and, and noticing that, hey, there's a there's a tool around here that has a great community and this can be used for RPA. So I, I think that, that having the RPA use case introduced to Robo Framework has really drawn new people uh, to the community. So, so when we talk about open source in RPA, it's, it's, I think it's a valid question to ask, why will open source take over RPA? It's, some people think that it's, it's not something that will happen inevitably, but I, I think it's something that will surely happen, but but, but there's, there's few reasons I, I think are, are important to understand. Obviously open source is, is, is free by nature, so, so people are free to experiment and there's a lower barrier to entry, but obviously all the proprietary tools have free versions as well available, so it's, it's not like I think it's not a good argument that we are building something that's just cheaper. Uh, nobody wants a cheaper version of something. Uh, another, another aspect is that, that there's uh, less risk involved when you choose an open solution. If, if, you think of, if you think that you're building a vertical specific RPA business and you start your business on top of a proprietary solution and the vendor doesn't support your use case in some way, you're, you're out of luck, you can't do anything. So, so many of these companies are exploring open source because of that, because they want to have the security and the, and the flexibility to extend the tool to their needs. But I, I think the most important reason why open source will, will take over RPA is, is because RPA is fundamentally a developer domain. And uh, if you think about other developer domains like version control or databases, They've, they have started out with, with uh, expensive proprietary enterprise solutions and then uh, be, become to dominate, be, be dominated by open source solutions. So, so I think inherently developer domains are, are really uh, good for, for open source technologies. You know, LibreOffice hasn't taken up you know, too, too greatly. So, so it's, it's not, uh, and desktop Linux. So it's not like consumer space would be good for, for open source, but, but if you think about developer domains, that's a, that's a different story. And uh, this is a kind of a controversial claim, but, but I think many people who are in the RPA industry kind of know this already. But it's, a, it's an open secret in the industry that, that, that business users are really not adopting RPA tools. Many companies out there claim that they're creating tools that, that would be used by business users to automate their own workflows and tasks. But in reality, what's happening is that, that business users are not taking, taking to RPA tools in great numbers and starting to suddenly create uh, business processes with, with them, automated ones. But instead, RPA tools are used by dedicated RPA developers. So we have a group of, of developers who who use these tools as their as the main kind of job. It's, it's, their, it's their job to create automated solutions with these tools. And, and so, so if, if you have a domain where you have tools that are built for business users, but are in fact used by uh, developers, you, you 
kind of can guess what's happening. The developers don't like the tools. They hate them. I've, I've talked to a lot of developers who, who have described their experience with working with commercial RPA tools as, as fighting against the tools. So I had a developer who said that his job has been to fight against a certain RPA tool for the past two years. Doesn't really sound that pleasant of a job. But, but, but developers want, want to have tools that support their workflows uh, and, and, and things like version control. You could imagine that every RPA tool has a version control option, but that's really not the case. So, and, and de developers want to be able to have an open community for sharing knowledge and code. Really, it ha it's so fundamental to how developers work, the ability to share your work and, and use the work of others, that, that I, I, think, I think is something that, that we have to have in RPA if, if you start thinking about it as a developer domain. And, and developers in general, they want to have ex expressive tools. They want to have power to express themselves and, and extend the tools whenever needed. And they, in general, want to work with real programming language instead of uh, uh, kind of a dumbed down uh, tools for business users. So, so if, if we conclude that, that open source is, is uh, something that we need to have in RPA, then why would Robo Framework in particular be the, the tool of choice for, for RPA? There's actually other tools available that are open source for, for, for RPA. They, they have been starting to come up in, in larger and larger uh, quantities now, these projects. Uh, but but I, think, I think Robo Framework is, is a good tool for RPA because it's, it's different. It's not trying to copy an existing RPA tool and just make it open. But it's actually different than those tools are, and it's, it's different in the right ways. And 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 the syntax we've heard in in, in many many talks today already that Robo Framework syntax is easy to approach for for new people. So so it goes to show that it's approachable. But then again, it's easy to extend. So if if you are getting into this ecosystem, you are starting to build with it. You, you gradually uh, gain new skills, you can extend the tool, and so there's, there's really high ceiling for what you can do with it. And, and then in Robo Framework, I think what's wonderful is that we have a common API for libraries and a way to share the documentation for libraries. So we have a way for the community to create new integrations for the tool, and we have a bunch of them already available. So that's, that's a great thing to have. And I, I think one, one overlooked fact in, in Robo Framework is, is the Robo Framework Foundation. This means that the, the project is not controlled by any single company out there. So we have, have actually tens of companies who, who come together and, 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 uh, and support the project and, and govern the project. So, so it's not, by, not just a com one, one company show. So there's, there's, again, less risk in that, that you, you would say that uh, the project starts going into a direction that's weird. And, and lastly, I think the community is really what, what makes Robo Framework so great for, for RPA. It, these new, new open source RPA projects that start to emerge, they might have few users here and there, but with Robo Framework, you already start with, with, with thousands of, of expert users around the world. And if you look at some numbers here, we can see that the roboframework.org site it has on average around 40,000 monthly visitors. And, and on, on the Python package site, the core Robo framework gets roughly 4 million uh, downloads annually at the moment, a bit more than that, actually. And then if you search the Python package index, you're going to find over 300 projects when you search with the uh, phrase Robo framework. So there's a lot of integrations built on top of the tool as well. And here's a picture showing some Google Analytics on, on the, on the roboframework.org site. So, so we can see that there's, a, there's roughly 
on on like weekdays we we have uh, two to three thousand visitors uh, daily and uh, and um, and the geographic low uh, spread is is quite interesting to look so we have United States leading the bunch then India China Germany Finland so <laughs> Enthusiastic German users over there. So, so yeah. So, so it really goes to show that the project is 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 n not one country show. is is actually really, really international and, and and goes to enforce our global takeover theme this this year. And and now that we 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 have RPA use case for robot framework, is is kind of important to understand. Why is RPA so important for the robot framework community? So if you think about test automation use, who who can use robot framework for test automation? Well, every software project basically out there that's large enough that, so that they, they care to invest the time and effort in, in using it. But but for automating routine work, what what's the Possible target audience. We we have basically every company in the world. It's it's not go, it doesn't go to say that every company would do it, but it, it's it's kind of a possible audience for the technology. So so understanding this goes to kind of show that that the use case around RPAs it has a lot of potential for the robot framework community and, and, and we can, when we when we come together around that use case we can expect the community to to multiply in size year over year if we really focus on it. And and with this increase of demand in, in automation, we are actually seeing a new developer category emerge. And and this is this category is, is about the developers who use robot framework and similar tools to to create agent-based automation solutions. Uh, and we, we call them these developers software robot developers. So so these are people, this is the same same kind of category as you would have front-end engineers or web, web developers. You have software robot developers. And and this is a category of people who who create agent-based automation solutions. And if, if you start to think about it as a separate category, you realize that there's a specific skill set involved in, in, in this work. And I think a lot of people in this room today are software robot developers. They, have, they are creating and operating software robots. It might be in test automation domain, or it might be in RPA, it might be in marketing automation, or application monitoring space, or some other space that I know of. But, but the solution still that people create with these tools, I, I think it's, it's good to start thinking about them in terms of software robots, which are agents that perform actions on, on systems similar to human operators. And, and skills in, involved in this are, are, obviously, if you start thinking about the skill set of a software robot developer, you, you want to know some robot framework and Python. You want to know how to find UI locators, use APIs, uh, use best practices in DevOps, and, and then you need the domain expertise in, in your particular area, whether it's, it's QA or whether it's, it's business process automation. You need to be able to understand your domain and, and translate requirements into software robots. So I, I think it's important that we start thinking about uh, this new category of software robot developers because it, it kind of gives an identity to the movement. And, and this, this ecosystem of, of software robot developers is actually bigger than the, the test automation ecosystem or the RPA ecosystem. And it's really about the people, the developers. And, and, and going forward, if we, if we think about software robot developers, we're gonna see thousands of thousands of, of them being hired every year around the world and giving the category a name and a job description is a good thing to have. So going back to the open RPA ecosystem and, and robot framework RPA, uh, looking forward, what, where are we right now in, in the ecosystem this year, beginning of 2020? 
who, who thinks that we are in, in this spectrum, we are on the, on the left-hand side with, with nuts and bolts and sheets of metal, or who thinks that we are with a, with a readily made, ready to go solution that, that can conquer the world? Who, who thinks that we are more close, closer to the left-hand side than the right-hand side? Yeah. I, I think it's still kind of build your own tools world out there with, with robot framework. And, and I, I, think, I think mostly what's missing in the open API ecosystem is, is sure, a use case specific tooling around core robot framework. Is robot framework by itself is, is really is a piece in a puzzle. You, you need to have a lot of other pieces in addition to, to make a fully functioning solution. Uh, but we can help as a community. We can, we can start building use, uh, tooling for specific use cases and also creating and sharing best practices. But uh, what I think most importantly we should start doing is, is, is uh, publishing more documentation, tutorial examples and blogs and things like that. And this is something that everyone can contribute. So it's not too difficult to go on, on Medium and, and, and write a blog post how to, how to do a thing with robot framework. And, and one striking moment I had, I think it was over a year ago, was somebody asked me, where can I go to, to learn robot framework if I'm a new user coming to this domain? If, if I want to start using robot framework, what, where should I go? And it's like, yeah, ah, that's a good question. <laughs> like, like, where, where should you go? Uh, user guide, maybe? But, uh, but in reality, people, when they come to this, this, this ecosystem, they want to learn about you know, how to use it for specific use cases like RPA, how to automate various things, and, and they want to have ready-made solutions and, and, and libraries, and also getting help when they get stuck. And I, I think this last part is something that we, we have covered pretty nicely as already. So we have the Slack. Slack workspace that has, I think, over 6,000 6, people inside. We have mailing lists and we have questions and answers on Stack Overflow and things like that. But, but I think we, we need to have more resources. And, and Robocorp, our company, what we try to do in this space, we really want to make the, the open up the ecosystem thrive. And, and we, are, we are doing that by creating learning material and resources for software robot developers. And, uh, and we want to improve the developer tools around robot framework specific for RPA use. And, and also we are building a specific uh, a cloud orchestration platform specifically designed for, for RPA use. But that's really our contribution to the, the whole ecosystem. And, and I think that there's a lot of things that uh, other companies and individual contributor, contributors can do as well. <clears throat> so, so is the robot framework community really ready for the global software robot takeover? I, I, think, I think that robot framework really has what it takes to become the leading technology for software robot developers. I really do. But it's, it's just one piece in a bigger picture. And, and, and we really need to come together and, and, and develop this tooling and best practices uh, around various use cases for, for software robots. We, we have them mostly for, for test automation right now, but even that side is a bit lacking. So, but I think what's best is that we have a strong community here that, that can really make that happen. And I think, again, the community is the best part that we, we have in, in so, uh, Robo Framework. And I, I think that that can really help us to win in, in software robots and, and win in the, in the open API ecosystem as well. Thanks. All right. Questions for Antti? Anyone? Um, you mentioned that you're going to host some kind of website for documentation and examples. Would that be similar to the real Python for Python? Because that's a really high quality site. Yeah, hopefully. Hopefully we're going to be 
able to get to the same level of quality. Obviously, we want to have that, and, and we, we are going to be hosting a dedicated site for that. Yeah. More questions? Ah, oh, there. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Hi, thanks for the talk. Uh, I just want a super quick question. What about uh, on the roadmap, uh, that one slide, so the uh, platform that you're planning, uh, what, how, what's the schedule on that? Do you know how, what, when it will be open and released and so on? Uh, July this year. Okay, cheers. Did we break it? Um, so the first talk today was about um, um, people and the environment and that we, uh, with technology, we can help the world making a better place, right? Um, um, when it comes to Robocorp and uh, the global takeover of uh, RPA, are there any plans to do something for the world as well with RPA or um, for the environment? Yeah, well, um, well, I, I think I think the first talk was really on the on the topic that you know you you want to enable people to do smarter things than routine work. So it was about factory automation, but it can be as well information routine automation. I think that's that's a really something that that <laughs> we should be doing as 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 people. I have a question. Have you seen a title out there like software robot developer? Are those out there already? Software robot developer hasn't actually been that used that much. We were thinking that what would be the good term to capture this this group of developers. But now that that you all are thinking about software robot developers, who who in the room can identify as one? Who who could say that they are software robot developer? I I think it's a when you when you kind of kind of um, give it a name, you can instantly st start seeing what the role is. It hasn't been used yet, but I'm 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 looking forward to seeing the first job description out there in, in hiring posts. Looking for one. I think it's a good title, and instantly it felt like good and exciting. Like ah, I'm programming robots. Yeah, because it's 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 much more than test automation engineers, automation engineers, RPA developers. They are all kind of software robot developers in in specific domains. Excellent. Hey, give it up for Antti. Excellent talk. Thanks.